142 legendary Pokemon. The whole lot of them are getting ranked. All in their Sunday best shiny forms. What they throw on when they're hitting the town on the prowl. So now I'm doing 142, including any freakish abnormality they may have. All the way from wearing a pink scarf to being able to section off 10% of their body weight and use it to hump people's legs. Legendary, mythical, illegal shiny Pokemon forms ranked. Look, I already knew Oki Doji was a thief the moment I first saw him. Far from subtle here, you didn't have to wrap his whole body in copper. Only reason it's a poison type to begin with was so it could be immune to lead poisoning, stealing people's roofs. The other two loyal three get a look at that shiny copper body, they turn on him so quick. Pull a mutiny and sell him off for scrap. This might have worked if you made the innards of him copper and kept the black. But instead, they've taken arguably my top three colors, kinda, and somehow they've still manage to make this the worst legendary shiny for me. Terrakion. Ooh, ah, you're looking rough. You're looking a bit dodgy. You've gone from rock fighting to rock bottom, like seeing your friends get a dodgy trim. I know he's not doing it for us. It's definitely not for me. It's all for him. But Terrakion, the, the makeup here, it's a bit too strong. Cosmog is a standard dead shiny, brightness up on the telly kind of shiny, but a lot more disappointing than the others that do this. Because Cosmog is a nebula Pokemon. He's saying they couldn't have made a shiny with this as a reference. There's probably colors in nebulas that our brains can't even process. Maybe that's it. Cosmog is just ahead of the curve and it's a skill issue. It's not his fault, is it? That your brain is too cosmically smooth to visually digest it. To us humans is borderline the same, but to like, I don't know, lore of the planet Omicron Percy I8, it's looking like a year six disco ball. Galarex uh, barely recognized you with the new tie. Maybe if his shininess rubbed off on the horse legends when it paired up, maybe it could work then. But I guess Calyrex has barely enough shine to begin with. Hasn't got enough stars flying around him to just be handing out to everyone. It definitely wouldn't change a single thing if he's riding Glacetria either way though. There's nothing going on with Glacetria. I think he's melting a bit. Are we really sure this one's shiny locked? I reckon it's just that no one's managed to clock it walking about yet. All of them, except Spectria, dead shine. Manaphy and Theon, the both of you, dead again. One of the few legendaries with a bloodline and still neither generation can produce something worth feasting your eyes upon. Are these even shiny? Are they having me on a bit? Are they gaslighting me? When I'm editing this, I could have the wrong ones up on screen and neither of us are gonna know. I wanna believe no one is whacking out the Funko Pop jaw gape reacting to a shiny one of these. Soy facing over a shiny Theon. Embarrassing. All they've done for Kubfu and the Yashifus, they went and gave them Homer's brown mouth. Ooh, scroll of darkness. Except it's more like, like a fleshy pink. The Shifu looks a bit more freaky because he gets it on the hands and feet as well. Better not be waggling them sweaty wug trio fingers anywhere near me. They're looking too uncomfortably human skin colored this way. Go back to having Homer's fingers and not his beard. <laughs> always good to see the karmic cycle coming into play once again. Nice to see Monkey Dory being the one to get hustled this time. Must have got scammed big to only end up with this as a shiny. Spent all his days stealing only to be robbed of its saturation. I wouldn't blame the little fella spending his days stealing all these masks wanting to not be seen in public. Chain Pal already looked pretty clean. I want to like the change here, but I'm going to have to say it's a rare fatty L on a color invert shiny. Maybe it's getting done in by the 3D model. Maybe 2D saves it. Maybe if it had a more jet black and didn't look like it was a contribution to the dirty pint. Maybe if they changed the ice pieces in the body as well, it could have worked. As it stands though, it just looks like the textures don't feel like clocking into work for the day. Needs a jet wash for all that dust. Sheen Pal talking about the wrong sheen here needs mister it would take one hard graft of a paint job to make heatran not look like a side man and as we can see here no one felt like stepping up to that impossible task i'll give it one thing all right here you go heatran your eyes are looking very nice very nice, very nice eye. But aside from throwing in the Halloween contacts, it just looks like someone finally remembered to preheat the heat tran. One half of the nature quadrant really just phone it in. Set themselves to light mode and Landorus and Enamorous are having an early night. Dead shinies, Enamorous 
still a vile specimen. At least this version is a lot less in your face about it. Because Enamorous gives me the exact same anxiety you get as being out with a group of friends and the venue has a drag show on. And you just know the drag queen's gonna pick you out of the crowd to do all the embarrassing stuff because they can just sense your fear. The shiny Enamorous, it eases me of that anxiety. It has a more calming presence. Not much action going for Zarud or the big daddy form either. I thought I'd give it a chance. You know, not just to pad out the number in the title, you know. Maybe the pink scarf would have been a game changer. But nah, they just gave its belly the texture of an undercooked gingerbread man. It was like a 2% tint added to the palms as well. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see there. Maybe in nature, the brighter color, it's simply more optimal. So it can see the blood on its hands properly to wash off after a hard day's graft down the ripping people's face off factory. Not much to say about Zapdos. Just a smidgen darker. Like he's got a sneeze coming and he's half charged up for it. Trying to hold it in for as long as possible before he headbutts himself a new belly piercing with that Masamune beak. Vulcanian is a rare situation where I've got to say, the golden look just isn't the one for you. Makes him look like a piss boiler. A volcano that erupts golden showers armed with its big urethra donut. Regice is one of them shinies that needs a name tag stuck to him. Gotta whack out the Sherlock Holmes kit. Give this one a big ocular pat down with the comically large magnifying glass whenever you're shiny hunting it. When Reggie Gigas was making Regice, he chucked the shiny version into his badge case and gave him two sets to failure of stylus rubbing. Reggie Drago has a more blatant change than his frosty cousin. I just can't gauge at all if it's better or not. I'm almost sure it's a downgrade from the dark green, but yeah, does it make it a terrible shiny? My brain can't make up its mind. But you know what? Let me just reverse the two. Okay, nah, the green one's a lot smoother. The blue clamps is not doing it for me. With Meltan and Melmetal, I know for a fact this one was just a control U huge job on Photoshop, because the nuts and kind of the tail thing. It's the only part of these designs with any actual color change to it. I'll show it to you, look. Huh? Hey, look at that. They didn't even try to make the liquid goo body a little bit quirked up. They didn't even have to go too wild with it. This could have just been any color of metal. Only the nut gets to see some action. I'd even take scrap copper metal metal going about absorbing the wiring under my house like a sponge. I think they had a lot more potential for a concept like Null and Silverly. I guess it's on brand for a test tube Arceus to be a slight shade of gold like shiny Arceus. I just feel like for a lab experiment, you could have gotten really freaky with it. You know, like someone dipped a little bit of slugma juice in one of their test tubes and forgot to wash it off. The new shade, I think it oddly complements the colors fairly well. It was little mutant green fish legs. Fezzendipity got hustled the least out of the Loyal 3. It's got a nice little navy tint going on. Didn't lose the rest of his coloring, but again, that's just not a big one, is it? It's not a big one. Don't think anyone's losing sleep counting down the days till Fezzendipity gets unshiny locked. Palkia and its shiny is such a Mandela effect for me. Palkia was always kind of pink, wasn't it? Or it, it? Was it white this whole time? It might have been white. You could have told me shiny Palkia is just how it looked in the Sinnoh remakes of Pokemon Go, and I wouldn't have questioned it. I never thought I'd see the day where I'd be saying origin form Palkia is winning an aesthetic 1v1 against any kind of fictional creature. But for some reason, the purples are going off a lot more for that specific model of Palkia. If Shiny Victini is somehow your favorite one, I wouldn't think you're gassing me up. I wouldn't go that far. I'd just think, how do your eyes operate within the same color spectrum as a Basset Hound? Because it's not looking too mythical, shiny or not. It's okay, but that's where the ratings for it stay for me. Especially when you realize this is Unova's answer to a Mew or Celebi. The shiny lake trio have their bodies built in the same material as a Sonic character. Another one of those shinies with the freshly shaved beige colored furry bods. I'm a little bit torn on a Zelf and Mesprit, just them two for now. Because in 2D, I think these shinies do a sound enough job. Once you crack into that third D, now that's when they start looking like they've been given a dodgy trim. Not as dusty as Legends Arceus is making them out to be, but I reckon the originals simply just work better. 
At first, I thought this was another defeat for the Ruin Legendaries, but I'm not mad. Scottish Warrior Woshin with the red trim. It gets points just for getting my attention like that, but it does just make it look like a balding middle-aged man. You know that divorce arc is hitting a bit too hard when he starts dyeing his hair like a mid-2010s Let's Player. Ogre Pond, the little beanhead inoffensive set of shinies it's got a nice little green bean tone looking highly nutritious rich in fiber not that it matters the only part that changes is the mug and that all gets covered up anyway by its many highly stealable masks Mechanical Magina looking a lot less busy. Being an artificial Pokemon, I guess the shiny here just meant the creator could not be asked to make sure the colors would last. The guy's a scientist, he's not a painter. Look, this is 500 years ago. Everyone else inventing back then was a jabroni. Da Vinci and that lot. Oh, what were they doing? They were just playing about with kites, making paper airplanes, hanging out with Ezio Auditore. Yeah, all I've been doing is uh, creating souls. You know, just a bit of tinkering about. Only just gone and made the formula to a living conscience in my shed. I'm that now, what do you want from me? Now you want me working even more overtime to sort out what some kind of magical, unscrubbable paint. Yeah, well, you're living in the fantasy world, mate. Moltres getting left in the oven too long. It does do it some favors. Not a huge amount of favors. The guy ain't done that much for you. But it's a fine enough shiny. At least in the 2D. The 3D really shows you how much this shiny is just farmer tan Moltres. Looks like it's been shaved bald. You slap his belly. It'd feel like a wise old man's head. Lobbed in the de-feathering machine. Ready to be sold by boss man for four pound with chips and a drink. The two superior forces of nature. Not by a huge amount though. The whole main trio just look like they tried giving themselves better lighting to make themselves look more jacked. With Landorus clearly putting in the least amount of effort on the color grading for his Instagram gym selfies. Bright purple cloud thunderous and dark purple tailed tornadoes. They're all right shiners. Not a bad one for Spectria. I'm liking the new shade, but it's another case of a gun shy shiny. They could have really played on the ghost typing, made the body white or something. I still think Spectria is all right, but this one's an unsolvable issue for me. A shiny isn't gonna salvage the fumbling they did, not making either one of these its own mythical Pokemon based around Kelpie. No amount of shiny, no amount of polishing is gonna save them from the allegations that these two are just reworked gold and silver beta sprites. It feels like their idea of finishing these designs was having them be mounted by Calyrex. Final design, it's already sorted, we just have Calyrex sit on them. Ting Lu, I think it works a bit better with the green mossy gradient. Good selection of colors, more befitting of the cauldron. Something's throwing me off here though. Cause you know really, Ting Lu could be any color. I mean, as long as it's a color that exists in nature or dirt. The bowl is the actual Pokemon here. It's just managed to dirt bend its way into becoming portable. So if we're playing by Melmetal rules, then really only the bowl should change since that's what contains the heartbeat in this operation. Diancie may have mutated into this highborn dual Pokemon, but no amount of mutations can ever change what it really is. You can take the Carbink out of the mine, but you can't take the mine out of the Carbink. Shiny Diancie is going back to its roots, yearns for the 14 hour shifts down in the mines. A working class Diancie who's not afraid to get its nubs dirty, a shiny with the power of a legendary in Mega Evolution, with the grafter's mentality of a Carbink. So shiny you can set your watch to. Now don't get it twisted, Keldeo still looks like a complete jobber. Even on a list with Terrakion looking this rough, it's still a full-time jabroni. But fair play to the wee fella. Relatively speaking, for how much of a sideman event Pokemon it is, it's not an awful crack at throwing a bit of glitter on. That awkward moment when you awaken Groudon from his 1000 year slumber in the piss chamber. Hate when that happens. He steps out of his little jacuzzi, he goes on all fours, he starts shaking about like a dog, he's getting, getting piss everywhere. Ruined my running shoes. Think some of it seeped into Blaziken's Pokeball as well. He's not gonna be happy about that. He's gonna be fuming. Shiny Groudon's looking like he got his boiler fixed by Shiny Volcanion. Don't even know why you need a boiler Groudon. Just open your mouth. He could go big lava veins in you. You know, just turn the jets on. He's looking really dehydrated, probably begging Kyogre to wake up and have a problem. The yellow is a decent shiny, but that red is too iconic for the big man here. 
Golden Arceus, your man went ahead and had himself a little King Homer power trip and gave himself the most valuable shiny. Within the lore, he'd get first pick. He's the one in Adobe Lightroom playing about with the color wheels for all of his little goblin OCs he chucked on the planet. You'd imagine he's the one behind all the shinies. So he's pretty much gone and just gave himself max stats. I thought this was another Manaphy Theon situation. I thought Mars Shadow was gaslighting me for a second there. The renders just don't show it in the Zenith form. So it has you thinking they just played about with the exposure and left it at that. That could actually be a bit of a flex, you know? A shiny that's unrecognizable. The only way of knowing is the sparkle around it. Yeah, that's right. That's right, we got the exact same Pokemon, but mine's got a bit of glitter on. You only see it for a second. You'll squint your eyes or I chuck them out the ball. Look, look, did you see the shine? No, 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 I'll withdraw him. Hold on. Do it again. Look, look properly this time. Look. You can see. You gotta switch the lights on him first, and then you clock the green to purple. But this one could go either way. Both elite colors. Who wins? You decide. Reggie Steele's looking a bit more fresh with that almost platinum blue detailing. About time Reggie Steele puts on a nice coat and hits the town. Been moping about in that cave scrounging off universal credit for a thousand years now. Spent the last thousand years living like Patrick Starr with fingers. He's like a seven quid Uber out from Lily Cove City and you just know the nightlife would be popping off there. Invite all the Reggies down, pre-drinks in the cave, tell them to dress in their finest shiny forms, have a sesh for the boys. The Shamans are another set of grass shinies that have just been made to look more Irish, which is always an improvement. The name even sounds kind of Irish. Aye, that's fun, wee Shaman. Hey, it's fucking Shaman. These may as well should have been Irish Pokemon to begin with, seeing as their main power is essentially field maintenance. And while I'm here, Meloetta in the base form is doing the same thing, just shifts to the more emerald tones. The tabs in its hair now read sheet music to Celtic Symphony. Shiny Meloetta exclusively playing all the Irish rebel bangers. Red Spirit Tag Jirachi. It's a fun little creature. I can respect the hustle, but I think the original version clears here. Can grant any wish and use that power to moderately tan itself. Anything written on the note gets wished to be true. Someone found Jirachi after a thousand year slumber like, I wish Jirachi were red and would be my best friend. Yeah, ooh. Oh, sorry. I, it's just kind of two wishes though, isn't it? Yeah, so... I'm I'll do the red thing, but nah, I'm shattered. Well, I'm going to be off for my super slumber again. Just hang about a thousand years or so. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, then I'll get around to that best friend wish. Cosmoem with the little pink galaxy in its belly. It's a nice touch. You see that, Cosmog? You see, that's what we like to see. That's the little nebula it should have had going for it. It looks pretty yummy. Weighing a thousand kilos. I can only wonder how much of that is THC. Shiny Cosmoem looking like the kind of edible that makes you paranoid at the TV because Meowth's speaking English again. Ice types remain one of the few shinies that can easily get away with turning the brightness up. Articuno has a very safe but reliable shiner. It's how you'd imagine an Articuno should be looking. Best served chilled, staying frosty, keeping it lemon. I think with any Pokemon that's made up of its own element, there's always potential left on the table when they don't recolor specifically that. Melmetal, biggest offender there, but a close second here is probably Regieleki. It's able to create enough electricity to power entire regions, but it can't change the RGB settings. At the very least, a blue plasma would have been easy money, arguably the best shiny Reggie in that case. But the white rings, as minimal effort as they are, it's an all right variation when you're not focused on what could have been. Ultra Necrozma looks insanely more omnipotent as the pure white instead of the gold. Bet Arceus is kicking himself for being too quick to cash in his own shiny on the solid gold. Oh, that's way better. Why did I think of that? I made all the shinies. How did I? Ah, oh, that is it. No more weed pen when I'm making the Pokemon. Much more godly that way. Should have saved the idea for himself. The gold, you know, Arceus people are talking. They think it looks a bit cheap. Like you're not confident with your god status. The blind and white speaks for itself. Like you're not even worthy to be looking at it. Your eyes can't even do it. The white ultra necrosma, it makes you think, you know, maybe, maybe all that Jesus stuff is legit. Maybe I should be giving up meat on Friday. 
when Meloetta is ready for a good scrap down the pub. The shiny pipes up with the purple tabs. My head cannon here on his head. The tabs in its hair are hosting some meaty bass riffs. The only reason it turns into a fighting type in the first place is so it can slap that bass properly. The purple beats green, just barely in this case. I would not have minded at all if they decided to pull a Charizard and retcon Lugia's original shiny from Gen 4 onwards after Shadow Lugia came about. Or maybe the idea of that just sounds better than it is, because Red Lugia is sound enough. Lugia looking like he's been interrogated, got gripped up by Ed and given a mean pink belly till he gives out the exact coordinates of the hidden jawbreakers. Genesect looks lethal. The sense of dread this one instills compared to the original. This is how Genesect looks when it's spotted you and all you can do is leg it. Nice one, yeah, nice one. Look what you've done. You've only gone and set off his alarms like a secret second phase boss fight. And this time, Genesect is fuming. Maybe our only indication of how an original Genesect species was looking before it became a paradox form before Paradox. Eternatus and especially Eternamax already made you feel like the world punched its ticket. It is the claw in our country are merely jumbo sized minion plushies ready for the taking. The shiny versions look like it means it this time. I know this is like what well, the sixth time the planet's almost been packed up for good in Pokemon's world. But if I saw this, I think, you know what? I think this might be the one. This is the one to actually do us in. I'd say make a run for it now, and you might have some time to get one last Greg steak bake before the earth caves in on itself. One for the road before you pay Arceus a quick visit. Or Giratina. Probably Giratina. That was a very selfish act of cowardice you just displayed there, running away from the final boss, not even trying to save the world. He left Leon on his own. Eternatus is eating Charizard right now. Looking at these lethal shiny forms though, I wouldn't blame you though. I'll be right there and Greg's with you. We can go see Giratina together. The God of Sun succumbing to being burnt by the very thing it rules over. It's like a Kyogre getting migraines from water pressure. This Solgaleo would have had a much easier time beefing with Kyogre than Groudon did. It looks boiled enough it could have just dived in the sea and packed it in like a lobster. Left Kyogre looking like a chicken Kiev. For its own good though, it'll keep up the sun cream. Because the white Solgaleos are leagues ahead. You're not improving it much. Elite legendary design. But I'm still all here for the fruity alternative. The Radiant Sun phase as well, a bit less harsh. But I'm actually not mad about the black features being swapped for gold here. Entei was potentially already one of the gateway drugs into the anthropomorphic K-hole. Now they've gone and made him a silver fox. Now that's just bait. They had to keep this one locked behind a 1 in 4,000 odds barrier. Would have sent way too many of you down the furry well. Another butterfly effect in action. Maybe you were one of the lucky 1 in every 4,000 players who witnessed this version of Entei while your brain was in its most volatile state. And now you can't even tie your shoelaces properly because the thought of a not makes you sweat. But in my actual opinion, it's a very solid shiny. You know, the guy's looking much more stoic this way. The rest of the lake trio are all getting shown up by Uxie. This one goes in a bit because it actually has the colors to back up the Sonic skin. Looking tasty in this form. You'd consume him like a gummy edible and three hours in, you suddenly go from being sat on your sofa watching Big Les to being sat in the astral plane with Arceus showing you his camera reel. A rare case where switching away from the purple was a top shout. The golden hooper looks much more polished now. Sometimes all gold is an easy fix. A bit of a cheap alternative color scheme to create the illusion of something looking valuable. But with the already golden hoops, you know it makes sense. Then it enlarges to the unbound form like- Look closer, Lenny. Oh yeah, you're really tight now. And you made a gold. Reggie Giggers, I've gotta hand it to him. Looking fresh with the navy blue attire. Reggie Giggers barely leaves the shrine, but when he does, he's ready to drop some game. Got his business casual colors on, so he definitely gets let in the casino at the end of the night. The new colors hopefully gonna distract the bouncers from all the swampies dragging on the carpets with their mossy feet. Takes one look at them swamp ass nubs. Bouncer would still probably only be like, Yeah, sorry mate, no trainers. 
The origin forms are actually going in a bit with their shinies. The Pokemon home renders can really salvage some of these. What a gaslight making origin Dialga look like that. The amount of airbrushing to smooth that one out. Like they're prepping Dialga to be on the next cover of Muscle and Fitness. Origin shiny Dialga. It looks way too clean for something that looked like a Final Fantasy VII overworld model. Base Dialga is a good variation as well. I do think the original sticks out more for me, but the green do be having a bit of omnipresence about it. Your man exists in all of time. That's what the glow means. Dialga, yeah? Like dial. You know the little thing you got on your Voltorb alarm clock? Name that after me, yeah? Don't believe me? Look at the glow, mate. Look at the glow. Oh, look, look, now you're a furry. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Remember when you went to play Sonic Adventure 2 at your friend's house and the disc didn't work? Went back in time. Made sure it was a fresh copy. Changed the timeline, mate. Dialga, me got a time used butterfly effect it's super effective because now you got a tail in your ass Necrozma and its two fusions had me thinking they're an easy 3 out of 10 trio of shiners. The sprites just don't do them great justice. You've got to be eyeing up them home renders. That's where they're getting served properly and you can really take in that moonlight blue shading. Along with the light pink, it makes for an oddly smooth color duo. I reckon I'm going to throw in full moon Lunala for this segment as well. Near enough dead on the same shade of pink. Just has yet to be chosen by the claw. Reggie Rock got baked, got that whole wheat healthy glow, looking so spray tanned up, has me thinking he's about to step on stage for the Olympia Classic. Reginald Rock coming for C Bum's title. It's like a refined, primal, ancient Reggie Rock. Makes the original look like it's been refurbished. The shiny, I feel like, is how a Roman statue of Reggie Rock would have looked like before aging. Kiram's main trait, staying frosty. So what do you do for the shinies? Not stray too far off the menu from what it knows and decides to look even more cold. I can't even land a sheer cold on a bird. And these versions of Kiram are landing it on entire cities. The chance to land calculation, that's irrelevant because the shine on them alone puts them on a level you could never reach. So that's a 100% accuracy every time. Doesn't even have to be orcs corded to the flying pirate ship. It could do it from the comfort of his own living room because they're that cold. Cold. Cobalion, another cold looking shiny, makes the original one look like a Christmas decoration. Now that's more like the aura of a specimen who's meant to be going about being a vigilante to doing any human who hurt Pokemon. Pokemon's furry Bruce Wayne. Two demonic looking primal forms. Look, if these two are the versions of Groudon and Kyogre beefing, I say we just let them hash it out. Yeah, leave them to it. Just let them make the planet a nice 50 50 split. Land and sea right down the middle, leaving us floating about in space, looking like the mutant Malteser in the back of the box with half its skin off. Groudon and Kyogre, they look kind of chill, typically. They seem calm. They just hang about their little cave jacuzzis. It's only when Team Magma and Aqua interrupt their slumber to give them a mandatory orb pondering sesh that they start to get this aggressive. Regular Primal Groudon, he looks somewhat fumed. A little peeve, but shiny Primal Groudon is anger there's no coming back from. This is shiny Groudon after he's clocked onto what Volcanion's been boiling his cave with this whole time. Kyogre still seems pretty chill. He's keeping his head down, trying not to laugh in front of Groudon when he finds out about his cave being installed with a piss jacuzzi. Unlike anger issues Groudon, shiny Primal Kyogre looks like he knows how to keep bit lemon just jamming out looking sleek feeling himself because he done got his nails did looks like everyone's going primal down the alola region the whole tapu crowd looking fresh they got that xbox 360 elite upgrade and i'm all here for it Deoxys is a tricky one for me because it's already the best mythical Pokemon on the market. So what could possibly be done to solidify that undisputed spot? They decided to go all in on making him the extraterrestrial cheese string. The speed and attack pair of Deoxys slither their way further up than the other two forms, I'd say, because that black underbelly changed the game for them a bit. Makes the contrast between the yellow and the rest of them a lot more balanced. The green and gold is a fair enough touch-up, but I don't know why they decided to be relatively safe about it. You could have made the Oxus any color you wanted. Had as much potential as the Nebula Cosmog. Still decent shinies, but it's hard to justify when you look at what even I can sort your man out with after 30 seconds of playing about with him in Photoshop. Maybe each of the forms could have had their own colors. 
Darkrai isn't an insane shiny change, but a subtle and spooky one. Like he's been hit with the distortion world filter. How Darkrai looks in your sleep paralysis visions. And in, well, in my sleep paralysis dreams, it's a little bit different. I get a nice 3 a.m. visit from Die Gap Darkrai. I'd love it if they could somehow implement the shiny gimmick onto physical changes like that. But it makes sense you have to edit a new model for each of the Pokemon. There's a thousand of them now. But could you imagine the one in 4,000 chance of running into Fishnet Darkrai? This one could go either way for me. Original Celebi was already a banger, so for the shiny to be on the same level, it must therefore also bang. Celebi following the natural order of things, maintaining a color in both the base and shiny that is perfectly edible in nature. Going from the green onion straight into the purple. The orange and mint green Eon duo are looking delicious. They're almost like two completely alternative beings within the Lati family. This isn't a duo, it's an Eon quartet. These are the ones who show up to Thanksgiving dinner to flex their 100k a year job as a professional email sender and their knowledge of Joe Rogan's knowledge on current geopolitical issues. Like, oh, you boys still on the primary colors. Oh, that's right. Well, hey, hey, who am I to? And keep your heads up, fellas. You'll catch up eventually. Latios and Latias made it past year one arts. The teachers moved them up a set and gave them the knowledge of secondary colors. Even the mega forms get in on the action, going for the more lime green. Now they have the power of color mixing and they've abused that power to be looking extra zesty. The Prime Magina, when your man decided to give it a much more clean paint job instead of the red. How could Magina in its original colors ever look bad? You know, creating artificial life, not only that, artificial life that's equally as powerful as Pokemon Jesus, purely as a little gift to some monarchy. All of that grafting, just for some medieval Tories to turn around and say, yeah. That's, that's all right. I, yeah, nah, I'm all, I'm all right. I'm all good. All because they just don't like the color of it. Any botches on the paintwork back in the 1500s and he'd be getting tarred and feathered. Realistically, he'd be getting dealt with either way. All this king did, he just asked your man, oh, could you get my daughter a present? And he spawns up this artificial being. They don't think he's a witch. He'd be getting tied to a chair and chucked off in the sea. He'd be getting sentenced to the Duncan stool. A Verizion. Where's this come from? I'm liking the pink touch-up. A proper gangster color. For a lot of grass shinies, it feels like it's either one or the other. Either looking like they're sun maxing, been injecting vitamin D supplements between their toes, or as if the only source of sunlight they've been getting is from the Windows XP screensaver. Verizion ain't about either of that. Coming in and changing the game. And all it's done is reverse its colors. I barely even clocked Verizion had any pink on it to begin with. We have Blue Mew. You'd imagine genetically we'd have ended up with Blue 2, but the green does be gone a bit hard. Looks like Mew 2 actually bothered training and unlocked a powerful new form for his sixth movie or whatever he's on now. Either that or this is the Mew 2 that spawned in the universe where some rocket scientist was chewing on a sour warhead mid-genetic surgery and dropped it in the Petri dish and was too shook to tell anyone about it in case Giovanni makes him go missing. Gives him a little permanent job relocation to Diglett Cave. Along with the Mega Evolutions, Mewtwo has four shinies. Had a Gen 2 shiny that got lost to time with the Game Boy. Not as drastic as a change as the Lost Charizard, and as I've only just learned existed from last video's comments, Lost Typhlosion shinies. The fella's just a little bit yellow. Golden Mewtwo had a bit of potential there. Shiny Yveltal is jarringly on point, being Pokemon's biggest energy vampire. The darker tones of red clashing on that white is looking lethal. Pokemon's god of destruction, keeping tabs on all life forms, absorbing their energy. But Shiny Yveltal's looking all full up. Couldn't possibly have another slice of life. He's at the half a gallon breaking point of milk your body can handle before triggering a mandatory chunder. And he can't have that happening. All that life it's drained would go straight back where it came from. A lot of those creatures, they're already in the ground now. Giovanni has got a lot stashed away in Diglett Cave. It'd be pandemonium if your Veltal spills any of that life force back out into what's left of them. You could have put any color on Reshiram in any sort of way and it would have banged. A nice blank slate for a potential bit of shining up. But the simplicity of the golden rings just works really well. And then you see this weapon in action and realize Reshiram's been packing a sleeper build shiny this whole time. Reshiram? 
be honest, you've been hiding purple fire up the batty, haven't you? White and gold was enough for me to give it decent ratings already, but to be getting them elite ratings, you've got to make sure he's switched on. If Dark Red Shiny Eternatus was getting to be too much to handle, if you've already legged it to the nearest dealer you could find and just shot up every lethal drug there is for your last hour on Earth, you might want to lie in the recovery position, start saying your Hail Marys till the ambulance arrives, because the Zacian and Zalazenta pair in their shiny forms, they've got it sorted. Calm it. Planet's not going anywhere. The dog pair, looking like they've just come from a long training sesh on King Kai's planet, specifically for this moment, digging into the Kaioken technique. I catch a bit of heat for not liking Kyogre. I still think it just looks a bit clapped and I can't really change the way my brain works. You know, I'm not going to judge. You can like your little legendary fish and it's liver spots all you want. But where we can all agree, the purple is an elite variation. It really gives you that. Oh, hell yeah. We got ourselves a shiny boys. Reel them in. Suicune was looking clean enough already. So what could they do to make a Pokemon whose main trait is purifying water even more clean? The all blue Suicune is looking very stoic like the Silver Fox Entei. This Suicune purifies water and even chucks in some electrolytes and salts to actually hydrate you. Just that slight change and it still carries a huge presence. It's like Ultimate Gohan, still mostly in the base form aesthetically, but you just know it's a lot more powerful. Not that keen on Zygarde. Maybe if it ever gets a motive that's not loitering in our wet cave or sending me on a quest collecting brain slugs, I'd care more. But these white models have no business looking this sleek with the perfect shade of green to top it all off. I'd fully understand in Pokemon's world if you quit your job down at the Pokemon to become a full-time goo gatherer if you're trying to assemble the shiny Zygards. The shinies of the Galarian birds looking like the originals is such a banger move. I've not been shy about thinking Moltres looks like the mascot to a dodgy local chicken shop with a two-star hygiene rating, but as a set of trios, I reckon they're all designed well enough where any pair of them could have traded colors and made it work. Blue Zapdos, orange Articuno, purple Moltres even. So the whole lot of them, top shelf bangers, but clearly Moltres is getting the most amount of sauce here. It just looks like, well, why isn't Moltres Moltres look like this the whole time. Shiny Galarian Moltres makes the Kanto one look like a Mexican street restaurant attempt at painting the Galarian Moltres on their walls next to the chicken deals alongside Goku and John Cena. Like a copyright free version. It's like comparing Ho-Ho to Firo. If you got trapped at the bottom of Area Zero and your friend's robot parents jams your Pokeballs to set their pet Koridon on you, if it's the shiny one, you're done. You're waiting out and you're waking up in the big poker center in the sky. Black Coridon would pack you and your friends up for good in a lunchbox. A whole lot of yous would be getting scran. You're gonna need a lot more than the power of friendship to take down a weapon like this, unless your friends were special forces. It is stupid how much of a glow up Zero Aura is having. Maybe I wouldn't have almost forgot to even include it in the video if he were looking this polished up day to day. I make Pokemon videos on the internet and Zero Aura has crossed my mind a collective total of three times. Well, that all changes now I've clocked it's a top shelf shiny. The net profit in gains the shinies handed to Zero Aura is off the charts. What a comeback went from the mythical Pokemon with potentially the least amount of eyes on it to looking like it tag teams with Incineroar in front of 5 billion Hulkamaniacs. I almost forgot Xerneas had two forms. I forget that he's not permanently switched on. Occasionally feels the need to switch into power saving mode when he's feeling a bit stingy. He can't be going about handing out eternal life constantly. Well, what is he? Oh, you, what have you done for him? Just not realistic to be looking this lean all year round. Whether Xerneas is feeling festive, feeling like fairy lights are kind of the vibe, or it's looking to save a bit of dollar on the electricity. It's looking so fresh either way. Black and blue Shiyu looking so refined. And that's saying a lot because the base form was tasty enough as it is. Makes the rest of the treasures of Ruin look like jobbers. You've got a short, stocky, bald man in his midlife crisis era. I, I, don't, I don't even know what to describe this shiny as. S some kind of feline Snickers bar full of nuts and a stag that serves the same purpose as this monkey statue I found in some antique shop the other day. A group called the Treasures of Ruin with only one worthwhile treasure in the whole pack. 
Miraidon easily could have just been weight, like so many other top dollar shinies, and it too probably would have been top dollar. But so many shinies do the white turn. How many of them are turning into stainless steel? And a Melmetal, no, he's a poser. He was stainless steel to begin with. Everything is chrome in the future. Shiny Moriden is what electric vehicles would look like if Tesla were run by Seto Kaiba, an actual competent Chad CEO. Whoa, look at the little fella. It's Blue Mew. And here, they've somehow managed to make a mirage of a Pokemon seem even more impossibly rare. You can't beat the classics when it comes to many a Pokemon design, but I'm all in on Mew Blue. Makes me feel like Mew's been shaved down to the skin this whole time. The blue one is what it looked like before it started receding its fur, flying about aimlessly in South Africa like a bald hamster. Should be flying around Turkey to get one of them hair transplants. If Mew can transform into anything, why not Hans Mewman. But also, why not simply transform into the shiny permanently and not fly about looking like that mole rat of Kim Possible? All three of the legendary cat dogs have a bit of sauce on the shinies. But the longer I stare, the longer I can't lie to myself saying Suicune is the best one out of them. Because it's easily Raikou. Just an all around concise design, color palette, thick, solid. Height. Barber sorted Raikou out proper with the mane. Goes to show that sometimes you're only a decent trim and a nice shirt away from people buying your free drinks. It's so obvious. Cracking into the top 10. I reckon more of you are surprised it's not the top one shiny legendary. But the sleek sky slinky blacked Rayquaza is still menacing. This is Rayquaza in the year 2023. After all the damage we've done to the ozone layer, the added ultraviolet rays coming in leaving him overcooked. Like a pepper army left a bake on a PS4 trying to run the new Spider-Man. That, that's his home. And we've essentially been kicking footballs at the side of his house, shattering all his windows in for generations and now he's a little bit peeved he's had enough of it if you lot keep smashing up his ozone layer this rayquaz is gonna come down them stairs with the belt and smashing every single thing with wheels or an engine like a dad confiscating their kids hot wheel set leaving us all making the work commute on pogo sticks it's really easy to forget that Cresselia is meant to be a duo with Darkrai. I fully reckon it would have been much less overshadowed with the shiny version. It has a unique look either way, but base form Cresselia just blends in with most other psychic types. Pink Cresselia is just another sound mon. It feels more like a Volcarona or a Rotom though, not really a legendary. It's just a bit of a loner who gets its own sprite in the overworld because it's sat around waiting for you. Purple light blue Cresselia though, there's no dispute for legendary status. At first, Zekrom, it wasn't terrible for me. Just a fair bit underwhelming. I did rate that subtle turbocharged look it had, that blue lightning aura surrounding it. But it's just not competing, is it? With the pink-bellied Lugias or the purple onions? But Zekrom got resurrected from the graveyard here. He was banished to like 90th place at first here. This fella is lucky I paid attention to the sprite animations because that green energy pulsing through its tail changed the whole game for it. Neon green light lighting up with the all dark grayish blue. I never thought something that could so closely resemble the piss that is a can of monster energy be looking so tantalizing. Easily a top five shiny here, but only when it's got some charge in it, when it's not got the fairy lights on, when it's not been preheated, it's like a C tier shiny. Full Moon Lunala maybe could have had some more work done. Blood Moon Lunala though, another all-time great shiny. This thing spawns and resurrects all the enemies roaming about your local area. Cubone mothers across the nations revive, finding their young like, Is that what, is that what skull you're wearing? You little freak. Hey, give me that back. Don't care what your little Cubone mates are doing. Do you see an organ donor card in my wallet? Well, you probably know because you'll probably nick that as well, you little freak. You see this moon in the sky and you already know. That's it. It's so over. Back in Greg's for that last steak bake. Better get scranning the vitamin D tablets. Definitely no more Jeremy Kyle reruns on the TV because daytime is cancelled. 
Oh, oh, oh. How can the conjurer of the almighty sacred fire look so cold with the more grayed out design? Makes an already iconic legendary look so much more iconic and legendary. I'm actually surprised the base form ho -Oh even made the cut to be put on the front cover if they've had this one in the chamber the whole time. I still highly rate the original. I'm just saying that if you showed these two to a randomer and asked them, what would you think was on the front cover of a game called Pokemon Gold? If they chose the red ho -Oh, they're just fronting. They're trying to be contrarian. Their favorite Teletubby was probably Gypsy because they're trying to be different. When everybody knows Poe is the gangster Teletubby choice. We all knew it was coming. Giratina doesn't just go hard. It goes the hardest. Pimp my mythical. Hooked him up for life. It has everything. Looks menacing. Looks fresh. Looks like a work of art, as well as a complete baller. You know, I wouldn't mind if Eternatus wiped out the world. I wouldn't care if I ran away, and that would be the sin that gets me sent to Giratina's realm. Because this Giratina looks like he's hosting the most live club down the distortion world. Got Cyrus on the decks, playing dirty drum and bass remixes of Little Root Town. Grabrawler, Grappalock, and the boys definitely headed for pre-drinks down Berserker's pub, but it didn't take too much convincing to go down to Giratina's gaff. Only had to use half the name. All he had to say was gear. Must have saw Arceus went gold and was like, yeah, nah, not having that. He's not one up on me like this. I'm going double platinum, playboy. No one's outstyling the shiny legendary kingpin Giratina in any form.